huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, Stuart Hetherington. Thank you and thanks, buddy. Steve Bradshaw. Thank you and thanks, buddy. Dr. John Vanderlaan. Thank you and thanks, buddy. And R. Smith hyphen C. I don't know how to say that. Thank you and thanks, buddy. Now, if you'd like to be a Patreon supporter, go ahead and click the links below. Check out how you can become a Patreon supporter. Now, some of the advantages that you'll have is absolutely nothing. There are no advantages at all to joining, but you are supporting us and I appreciate all your help. This is a very popular video of a patient with rhythmic movement disorder. This guy happens to be 39. Rhythmic movement disorder can happen in both REM and non-REM sleep. I don't know what stage this guy's in, but this is a really common video that we see at all sleep conferences when rhythmic movement disorder is discussed. Now, unfortunately, this video is extremely informational and we can't have that. Plus, I need to get it over 10 minutes. Now look, my son is having some success on the baseball field. Look at that, nice base hit. Good job, buddy. It's at the state tournament. We need to temper this. Look at this athleticism. Look at this. You need to temper your successes. You'll have a lot of success in life, a lot of failures. Here he is against a lefty. Look at that, right down the line. Now, you have to remember, one day you're on top of the world, uh, the next day, you're just some kid uh, sliding on his butt, landing on his head. Then you have uh, a jerk teammate splashing a bunch of water in your face. And that brings me to this. This is a screenshot, or actually not a screenshot. This is my home sleep diagnostic testing business. It's AXG Sleep Diagnostics. We do home sleep testing with uh, EEG attached. So this is a patient that was, by the way, gave me permission to do this. This is a patient who was complaining of daytime sleepiness that was starting to affect job and personal life. He also had cameras in place in his apartment and he was able to capture some of the images that he had some concerns of and was hoping they'd show up the night of testing. Just a, a primer on this. These top two here are eyes. This middle one here is the patient's chin. These three here are EEG. So these are on the scalp detecting brain activity. You can tell wake and asleep. This bright pink one is snoring. You can see a couple snores here, here and here. Then we have, there's a lot more snores. And now we have uh, the airflow that's breathing. This is the belt around the thoracic, around the chest, and then the abdominal belt down here. We have heart rhythm. And then his legs are down here at the very bottom. I'm going to go ahead and actually switch those so they're a little more prominent. Yeah, we'll just leave them there. So as we scroll forward, this is pretty much a standard sleep study. Really nothing much to see here. A lot of snoring, don't see any arousals, nothing scorable as far as a sleep disordered breathing uh, is concerned. Right here we have just a typical arousal. You can kind of see what happens to the airflow when someone wakes up. This is a normal arousal. Again, nothing of note. You can see after the arousal. People who've seen any of my sleepy head videos will be of interest. You see after the arousal, nothing happens, but it takes a little bit for the breathing to um, come back down to steady state. And here you can see after a couple minutes, it does. Now just FYI, each this line here to this line here is 30 seconds. So this is a two minute window. Now as we get closer to here, the patient goes into REM sleep. Right here we see the transition. We have one respiratory effort related arousal where the airflow decreases by 30% or so. We have a 2% desaturation and then we have a brief arousal right here. We have a couple of those. Those aren't what we're interested in, it's this. This is highly unusual. Me playing a little slip and slide kickball with my all-star team that I coach. Look at this raw athleticism. Oh my God, like a cat. Now, I know I haven't been working out that much. Got a little dad bod. I don't need this. And I thought you were going to make the biggest splash. Unbelievable. About every one to two seconds, we have a rhythmic movement here in the legs. If you put a ruler on these, these are all exactly the same distance apart, which is highly unusual. You can see up here in the EEG, it's actually causing a problem because the patient's head is rocking. So this is creating our, what's called known as artifact. You can't really trust it. It's artifact, meaning it's obscuring. It's being obscured by something else. And in this case, that's movement. You can have sweat artifact, respiratory artifact, EKG artifact, things like that. It's just an abnormality in the signal that isn't real. Um, it's just picking, being picked up from somewhere else or being obscured by something else. 
So the leg movements are causing this. And you can see this goes on for quite a while. It'll stop for about five seconds, then resume, stop for about five seconds, resume, and it goes on for quite a while. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that section right there actually looked like. This is the patient during that clip. You can see it's only in the right leg. You can see how its head is bouncing every time it hits. That's what's causing that artifact that we saw. Now this goes on quite a bit throughout the night. I have several clips, but all of them are really essentially the exact same as that. Here we see some more powerful rhythmic movements. This gentleman is also in his 30s. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a different window so you can see it more like a real time. So this is what it looks like in real time. Let's go ahead and make this a little less noisy. But when it isn't occurring, you can see the EEG is actually intact. Everything looks good. And once you start up, you start seeing the waves and it starts to become obscured with the artifact. But you can see the rhythmic movements um, mostly in the right leg. The other leg is showing some movement. Again, that's probably artifact because you can see from the video it's not moving at all. Now, what do you do about this? That's the question. And this gentleman here, uh, clonazepam, uh, was prescribed uh, one microgram per night, had no effect on him. Here's a patient having REM sleep. It's normal. You don't see leg movements in it. So it wasn't happening all the time while he was in REM sleep, just periodically. Uh, the recommendation for this patient was actually prescribed. I had uh, two physicians actually take a look at it. One of them recommended a dopaminergic agent such as ropinerol, or Pramipexol. I'm not exactly sure what either of those do. You can look them up yourself. Uh, another physician actually recommended the same thing, a, a benzodiazepine or a tricyclic antidepressant. And he actually said clonazepam was the number one thing that he would recommend, uh, which is what we saw was recommended for this guy, which had no effect on him. At my sister's house, Cheeto the kitten has taken over Tootsie, the ugliest dog in the world's bed, and see what happens. That's right, get out of here Tootsie, my bed. This is more of an informational video about what disorders are out there. This is a parasomnia. Again, it was diagnosed as a rhythmic movement disorder. It can occur in both REM and non-REM sleep. Pretty rare, um, but it can actually cause quite a few problems during the day as far as daytime sleepiness. Hope you learned something from this video, and if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and drop a like or a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I know this is not typical of my normal content, but sometimes uh, you come across something that's pretty rare, and uh, this is something that I wanted to share, and uh, the patient was kind enough to supply the video and give me permission to actually show you what's, what was occurring in his sleep. Now, if you're interested in having a test similar to this guy, uh, this is my website. It's AXG Sleep Diagnostics LLC. Uh, some of the things that we do, we can go and do a data therapy analysis, which I look at um, your sleepyhead or Oscar data if you're using CPAP. I look at that, I can help you interpret some of the things that are going on. Um, the other thing is we offer a type two home sleep test, which is what we're seeing right here. You can have one of these in the home. Really popular with uh, people that are regulated by the Department of Transportation, like truck drivers. Um, also pretty popular with airline pilots, folks that are regulated by the FAA, as well as people who are just self-pay and don't want to pay for a, or go to an in-lab study, pay the high price there, uh, and feel like it's not representative of their sleep. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, or at least learned something from it. Thanks for stopping by. If you're looking to support this channel, head on over to MassBright.com. You can pick up some MassBright there, as well as a large selection of slightly used masks at very affordable prices. Go ahead and check it out. It helps support this channel. Now is a great time to also mention that we are an Amazon affiliate. Now, as an Amazon affiliate, we earn on all qualified purchases. So we'll have a link in the description box below. Please consider using that when shopping Amazon. 
Then let's go ahead and mention this Patreon thing just one more time. Now, some of the benefits of joining this is um, absolutely nothing. There really is no benefit at all. You can look at these for free on YouTube. But if you're appreciative of our work, you can go ahead and check this out and donate monthly.